Christ is risen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I still think you can do better. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Much better. So now I wonder, why are you here? Why did you come here this morning? All of these people right here came because Zoe's being baptized. <laughs> That's you. That's you. <laughs> That's a great reason to be here. But there's other reasons why we're here too, right? Some of you are here because mom made you get out of bed. <laughs> At least you're honest. I like that. Honesty over here. Right? If somebody got us up and said, you're going to church this morning. Right? Which you can't actually go to church. Because you are, what happened this morning made you the church. So wherever you are is the church. You can come here for worship, which is why we're here. To worship Christ and Him crucified and risen. But why are you here? What are you looking for? See, Mary went to the tomb that morning, that first day of the week, because she was looking for something. She was looking for the tomb of her teacher. She was looking for the tomb of her master. She was looking for the gravesite of the person that they'd been following. That she just saw get murdered on Friday. She walks into the garden and she sees that the stone is rolled away. And she runs back to find Peter and the disciple that Jesus loves. Who is... No cheating if you were here last service. <laughs> Who is the disciple that Jesus loves? John is what we think, right? Because this is the Gospel of John. And we think that the guy that wrote it has a really big head and he thinks that Jesus really loved him more than anybody else. So he says that instead of calling himself John, he says that he's the disciple that Jesus loves. That's one way to look at it. There's another one that we'll get to. We'll get to later. But Peter and this other disciple get to the tomb. The disciple that Jesus loves stops. All he sees is the linen laying there where Jesus was. Peter goes in and he sees the linen, but then he sees the, the head wrapping in a different place. And the other disciple goes in and then they, it says they believed, but what did they do? They went out and told everybody they'd ever seen that Jesus was no longer in the tomb, but he was alive, right? No. It says they went in, they saw all of this stuff, and they went home. It meant nothing. They didn't get it. Some of us came here this morning because we're going to worship this guy, like I said just a little bit ago, that died on Friday, right? We laid him in a tomb, and now he's, he's alive. He's been resurrected. And that is always something that's very easy for us to understand. Because we're not like Peter and John, and the disciple, John, not John, the disciple that Jesus loved. Right? We're not like that. We get it. Right? You all completely understand the resurrection. The fact that Jesus died on Friday and now he's alive. This, this means yes. This means no. With all these blank stares make me think that I'm like three or four heads up here. Right? It's, sometimes we don't get it. Sometimes it's hard for us to understand what God is telling us or what God is asking us to do. Sometimes it's not an easy thing for us to live out this faith, right? That's why we call it faith. We can't actually explain it. I can't actually give you scientific proof that Jesus died and then he rose again. It's part of that faith and understanding. But here's your permission this morning. The thing that you didn't think you were going to get coming to worship on Easter morning. That you have permission to not understand. You have permission to say, I don't get it. You have permission to question what God is telling you. Because it's right there in our text. Peter and the disciple that Jesus loves, they went in and they saw it. And what did they do? They went home. They didn't tell anybody. And then we have Mary. Wonderful Mary. Mary Magdalene, remember. Not Mary, the mother of our Lord, but Mary Magdalene. Is there at the tomb. She's standing and looking in. She's wondering what's happened. 
And she sees two angels and they say, woman, why are you weeping? And they, Because they've taken him away. And at that moment she turns around and who does she see? <laughs> who did she actually see? Jesus. But she didn't know who he was. Remember I just said a little bit ago how you were gave permission to not understand him? And, and here's another example, right? Mary didn't get it. She says, sir, she imagined that he was the gardener. Because she went to the garden, to the tomb where Jesus was laid. And why is it important that she thinks that he's the gardener in a garden? Why is this important? How many signs were there in the Gospel of John? And John, John doesn't have miracles. John has signs. And there are how many signs in the Gospel of John? Seven. If, you, if you questioned it, I'm telling you right now. It's not a pop quiz. Seven. seven. There were seven miracles in the Gospel of John. There were seven signs. And how many days of the week are there? Seven. And what day of the week is this? First. It's actually the first, which is the eighth day, which is the first day of what? The next week, which could be considered new week, or the new creation, and Jesus is the gardener in the garden of the new creation. Oh. And then he says to her, woman, why, why are you weeping? What are you looking for? Is that what Jesus said? Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? And that's when she says, if you've taken him someplace, tell me where you put him because I'll go and get him. And then Mary says, or Jesus says to Mary, Mary. He says her name. And at that moment, she realizes who this person is. She runs up and she grabs hold of him. And she says to him, Rabboni, which is teacher. That means many things, which aren't simply something that we see at first light. right? Mary calls him teacher. She doesn't call him friend. She doesn't call him master. She doesn't call him acquaintance. She doesn't call him Jesus. She calls him Teacher, which means that there's a relationship between Jesus and Mary. It means that there's something special there, that there's some kind of bond. And that bond is not just a bond of friendship, but it's a bond of a teacher to a student, which makes Mary a disciple. And she knew that. And she lived into that relationship. And she saw that empty tomb. And then she saw her teacher. And she grabbed hold of him and tried to live into that relationship. And he said, don't hold on to me yet. I must ascend to the Father. But go and tell my brothers, right, the disciples, that I am alive and everything's okay. And it's all going to be good. Is that what he said? He said, tell the disciples. I am ascending to my God and to your God, to my Father and to your Father. You see, this empty tomb is not important because it's empty. Because many tombs over the, the centuries have been made emptied by, by thieves and bandits, grave robbers. So an empty tomb doesn't really mean anything. It's the fact that Jesus is alive. And that he's made himself known to Mary. And not only to Mary, but he tells her to go and tell the disciples that it's not just about me. Now it's about me and my relationship with the Father that I am also bringing you in with me. Because it's not just Jesus is God. And it's not just Jesus is Father. It's my God and your God. It's my Father and your Father. Jesus tells Mary to go and tell the disciples that he's going to continue this relationship with all of them. So Mary goes and tells the disciples, I've seen the empty tomb. I don't think you're awake. I've been up since 3 o'clock, people. Come on. <laughs> Mary went and told the disciples. What did she say to the disciples? I have seen the Lord. Not the tomb is empty. Not he's alive. I've seen the Lord. And then she told him everything that Jesus had told them. That he was going 
to his God and our God and his Father and our Father. And that relationship was going to continue. See, it's not about the fact that the tomb is empty. Jesus went to the cross to die for our sins, to redeem us from everything we did wrong. And he walked out of the tomb to meet us and tell us the relationship is not over. <coughs> the relationship that we had continues. And not only does that relationship continue, but I'm bringing you in with me so that you can be one with the Father in heaven. We are all going to be one together. And Jesus told this to Mary, and Mary told it to all of the disciples, including the disciple that Jesus loved. And I told you a little bit ago we were going to talk about who that disciple was, right? One, one, one theory is, is the disciple that Jesus loved in John is John. And it's a good theory. But I think that there's someone else that is the disciple that Jesus loves. And that's the person that he's calling today to remember exactly what he told to Mary. That we are in this relationship together. And that I am going to my Father, and I'm going to your Father. I'm going to my God and to your God. And I want you to go and tell all of the world that you've seen me, and that I'm alive. Because that relationship is the most important thing. And who is that disciple that Jesus loves? It is you. You are the disciple that Jesus loves. He named you and claimed you and called you his own. And he says to you like he said to Mary. He calls you by name. And he tells you that he is going to continue that relationship with you. Just as he's going to do this morning with Zoe. He's going to bring her up here and we're going to pour water all over her head. Probably make her cry. <laughs> but she's going to be named and claimed by God. So what God said to Mary, God says to Zoe. And what God says to Zoe, God says to each and every one of you. And he invites you to go into all of the world. Not tell anybody that the tomb is empty. And not tell anybody that Jesus is alive. But tell them that you have seen the Lord. And that He loves them just as much as He loves you.